Hi everyone, it's Mari here for Honeybee Stamps. I'm going to be creating a fun card for you today using some Adventure Awaits products, including this At The Lake layering stencil set. This is a set of six different stencils. They all coordinate beautifully with the die set that you can see here. Now this die set is also an embossing um, die in that it does cut some of your paper and it also embosses, which is very cool. And that's the lakeside scene builder set which is just absolutely stunning. Now I did run that scene lakeside scene builder die through my die cutting machine onto this white piece of cardstock and now I'm going to show you how this coordinates beautifully with this stencil set. Now I'm just using some of my Spellbinders tape to tape down the stencil and the paper to my waffle flower mat. Um, I'm just going to use the silicone mat for the ink blending portion and just making sure that the stencil and the paper don't move as I'm working on ink blending the color through the stencil. This first stencil has openings here you can see for the clouds in the sky for example and a few of the little tree areas. So I'm going to start off here with some peacock feathers and this is going to blend out the little clouds that are part of that sky. So just blending the peacock feathers through those openings in that top area and this is just going to create a really pretty aqua blue color in the sky for those clouds and honestly it's great because you can just blend with whatever colors you want. You can leave certain areas of the stencil open if you want. Um, lots of different options here for the ink blending portion when you're using this stencil. And this does stencil onto that die cut piece that's also got the embossing on it as well that was created with that lakeside scene builder die that I showed you at the beginning. This stencil is going to blend on here. Like I said, you can see some little tree areas there and then we're just going to build from there. So it's really, really super cool. You can get a ton of details um, onto your project. I will make sure that I list all of the colors of Distress Oxide that I'm using here for this uh, process. Um, you should also be able to see the lids of the ink pads here as I'm going through the process. This is just a really nice light gray here. This is Lost Shadow. Just going to go through and layer on this gray for that mountain area there. And then I'll use some Salty Ocean for the lake down at the bottom. So you can see that I can, there's enough separation in the openings here on this stencil that I don't have to worry about this blue getting onto the area where I've already put the gray. If you feel like you need to tape the area off, you can, but you really don't have to. The way that these stencils are organized, it's actually really, really easy to be able to blend things without getting into another area on the stencil that you've already blended or that's needs to be blended yet. So here you can just see this is going to just add that other mountain in as well. So I'm just making this one that's in the foreground a little bit darker than the the uh, mountain that was in the in the background there. And you can just see there's tiny little openings around the trees to allow you to get that pigment in behind the trees, which is genius. So you're really able to create a, a really realistic look. Now I'm also going to do the stumps of the trees with some brown ink here. I believe this is gathered twigs and just wanted to fill that area in as well for those trees. Going to start the greens for the trees here. Well, I guess I've done a little bit already with that lighter green and now going in with a darker green for some of the other trees. Just varying the colors a little bit just to make it look a little bit more interesting. And honestly, you can just use whatever colors you have of inks for this portion of the project. So just watching or looking at the stencil just to see where the other openings are. And it's really nice that the stencils are clear. I love that honeybee stencils are clear like this because it does make it really super easy to be able to see exactly where you have already stenciled and what still needs to be stenciled. So I'm just going to go on now here to the next one. And this is such a huge stencil set. There are six stencils in this set, as I mentioned earlier, which is very cool. You're gonna get a ton of different details as part of this scene. And just fill, filling in these trees here now as well. And like I said, varying the colors of the greens that I'm using here. So the greens that I used are Peeled Paint, Rustic Wilderness, and Mowed Lawn. And each with just a little bit of a different uh, color of green, just to add that little bit of depth and dimension to the project. So here you can see that Mowed Lawn. I'm going to also do a little bit of this grassy area down at the bottom with this stencil. 
and just filling in all of the different little areas as you go. It's really nice that Honeybee does have a variety of different sizes of blending brushes. So you can, um, you know, you can get the, the finer detail brushes as well for the smaller areas on the stencil, which will help you out as well. Now you can release the top portion of this die um, or you can keep it secured together. It's totally up to you. I chose to release these two pieces and that's going to allow me just to create a little bit of depth. Now what that means is I'm going to put one layer of this direct to the card base and the other I'm going to pop up on a little bit of foam adhesive. So I blended a little bit of lighter blue on there on the sky with tumbled glass and now I'm just going to size this down so that it's going to fit onto my A2 size card base. So what I'll do is I'll just put this onto the card base and my card base is an A2 size landscape top folding white card base here. And I'm just going to put these pieces of the card together and then I'll just use a pencil just to add a little tick mark and just to me felt like the easiest way of doing this. And so now what I'll do is just take this to my trimmer and trim that down on that little pencil mark. And then this will be all sized perfectly for an A2 size. Now you may want to leave a white margin around your project. So you may want to size it down another quarter of an inch. Totally up to you. I was just really happy with this almost looking like a painting that's going from margin to margin on my project. So I didn't leave any white space around the edge. Now I am going to take this and start to assemble this together. I will just add some of my honeybee liquid adhesive to that top portion there to adhere it down to the card base. And then you'll also see me using some foam adhesive, some foam tape on the bottom portion to secure that on. And in that way, it's just going to create that little bit of extra dimension. So just getting that liquid adhesive on there and get that glued down. And you can see how this is all just going to fit perfectly together when you're all finished. So before I put this down, I decided I wanted to add a little bit of extra hickory smoke along the top of this lost shadow mountain here. And that's just going to add that little bit of extra shading and detail to those edges. So once I finish that up, I'll go ahead and add that foam adhesive onto the back of the entire card piece back and you're not going to see me put all of the foam tape on there but all of this space is eventually going to have foam tape on it and now I'm just going to go ahead I'm going to just going to flatten that a little bit and then place it onto the card base adding it over top of that cloud area at the top and now you can I'm not sure if you can really see this on the um, video but it does add some nice dimension. Now I used my Bitty Buzz Cutter to cut out that paddle and the canoe die that are part of the Lakeside Scene Builder die set. I cut the paddle from some craft and I cut the canoe from some really deep red cardstock so that now I have those two little pieces. I'm going to use some of my Prisma colors just to add a little bit of depth and shading to the inside of the canoe just to make it look a little bit more dimensional. So this is just a really dark reddy brown from my Prisma color pencils. Um, you could use your Copic markers for this, um, anything that's going to add that little bit of color. Now I'll just use my Honeybee Craft pick here and just open up that little slit that's cut from the die. So the Lakeside Scene Builder cuts two little slits in your card and it's going to be a spot for the canoe and a little spot for that paddle to dip into the water, which is so cool. I love that. Those are all secured with some liquid adhesive now. And now I'm just going to start to add a few more details. I'm going to take a dark green Prismacolor pencil here and just color in some of the little embossed areas that were created by that die. And in that way, just add in a little bit of grassy detail into those embossed areas. Now I used the Hooked on You sentiment set and coordinating die set to stamp out and die cut my sentiment here. I used my Honey Bee Intense Black ink to stamp out the sentiment and now I'm just using a little bit of foam adhesive to pop that sentiment up. It says take time to enjoy the simple things in life which I think is a beautiful sentiment for this image and it just really finishes it off nicely. I'm going to add a little bit of white splatter just to add that little bit of texture and detail to my project and once that is all finished my card is going to be done. I just love this 
Lakeside Scene Builder and coordinating at the Lake Layering Stencil Set. I've linked up to all of these, these different products in the description box below. So check those links out and check out this beautiful Adventure Awaits collection from Honeybee Stamps. Have an amazing day, friends, and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.